driving the potential for collapse of the industrial economy is peak oil. This slide shows the typical extraction pattern of finite materials, the bell-shaped curve. These are the data, these points. And this curve was drawn by Marion King Hubbard in 1956 based on these data points up to here, up to 1956. The presentation in 1956, Marion King Hubbard, a petroleum geologist working for Shell Oil Company, announced three predictions in describing how extraction of finite materials follows this curve. He said he expected the United States oil supply to peak in terms of extraction or production, as it's usually called, between 1969 and 1971. That peak came in 1970. He predicted the peak would be here at 3 billion barrels a day. And he was he considerably undershot, but he got the year exactly right. He forecast between 1969 and 1971 and happened in 1970. In 1956, he predicted that we would pass the world oil peak in about a half a century. We passed the world oil peak in May of 2005, so he missed that by seven months, 50 years in advance. And the third prediction he made is that there would be significant cultural disruption in the wake of passing the world oil peak. Arab Spring, anybody? Occupy Wall Street? You want significant cultural disruption? I think it's well underway. Those are his three predictions from 56 years ago. After the U.S. peaked, the United States government took the two steps it could take politically to accommodate the fact that our industrial economy mainlines cheap oil. The first of those strategies we know now affectionately is drill baby drill. So after the U.S. peaked right here, we drilled for oil where we found it, in that case Alaska, we opened up the North Slope. And we got a, another little shoulder of oil extraction in the wake of opening of the North Slope. But you can see that U.S. extraction or production is now down to less than half it was at peak. So that was the first political solution, was to drill where we have it, drill baby drill. The second solution is to get oil wherever we can. In, in the late 1970s, the last decent man in the Oval Office, in my opinion, Jimmy Carter, recognizing what it takes to maintain an empire in decline, established what has become known as the Carter Doctrine. The Carter Doctrine says that with respect to the Middle East or anywhere else in the world, that's our oil over there. In addition to drill, baby, drill, we have kill, baby, kill. Those are the two political strategies. 2008, we were importing 70% of our oil from foreign sources. Now it's down to about 50% because of the ongoing economic issues in this country. We aren't using nearly as much oil as, as we used to be using because nobody can afford to drive anymore. And we're extracting the heck out of the tar sands. And according to a treaty we have with Canada, we get their oil before we, they do. And that's our kind of treaty. That's the only kind of treaty we don't not pay attention to. It's the one that works seriously in our favor. So we're getting a huge amount of our oil from the tar sands, so we have to import less than we used to, which means we have to go to places like Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Somalia, South Somalia, and so on, to a lesser extent than would otherwise be necessary. Not that I'm a fan of, not that I'm a fan of the tar sands. Here's an example of what happens to countries or regions that peak late in the game because we have technology that can keep pushing oil out beyond the limits that we used to be able to through pumping salt water into the wells and so forth. Places like Mexico, which peaked late, go into catastrophic free fall rather than following the bell-shaped curve. They really collapse. So, our number two supplier is an absolute free fall. 
It won't be long before Mexico is unable to export any oil, no matter how badly we need it, because they need it for their own uses. Oil, oil extraction follows the same pattern as oil discovery, and oil discoveries have been following since 1964. You can't drill it if it ain't there. And every time somebody discovers a huge find of oil somewhere on the planet that makes the news, and by huge find, they mean something that ends with an alien barrels. We have aliens and aliens of barrels out there. But do the math. If somebody reports a three billion barrel find, that's said to be a big, big number. Three billion barrel find, we use 75 million barrels a day. Three billion barrels isn't going to last long than 75 million barrels a day. World oil production peaked or extraction peaked in 2005, assuming a 4% annual decline rate, which is a very conservative projection. We have access to the same amount of level, same amount of oil, the world level in 2025 as we did in 1970, when there were less than half this number of people on the planet, and the planet was far less industrialized. 12 cars in all of China and India, for example. Not very many people on the planet relative to today, and not much desire for increasing industrialization beyond Europe, Japan, and the United States. It's difficult for me to imagine we'll make it to 2025 with the lights on. This is a general pattern of what was predicted to happen and now what has happened in the wake of passing the world oil peak. And the blue line is the quantity of extraction, and you can see that we've been on an undulating plateau with very little increased oil availability since 2000. In fact, according to BP data, we hit that undulating plateau in 1998. Small wonder, then, that by every macroeconomic measure, the U.S. economy peaked in 2000 including the major stock indices, which peaked in 1999 or 2000. So we've been in economic decline for a while now. The last superpower didn't take this long to fall. Once we hit that undulating plateau of oil extraction, the price, when demand goes up, the price goes up. And so in July of 2008, we saw the price of oil spike to $247.27 in the wake of the peak. And then, unexpectedly to most people, except petroleum geologists and economists who have been paying attention to what happens with oil, the price plummeted down to $34.20. Within six months, the price went from $147 to $34. That's what happens in the wake of peak. You have these huge fluctuations in price. That destroys all incentive and therefore potential for developing alternatives to oil. The price of oil got down below $100. T. Boone Pickens canceled his plans for wind farms all over the Great Plains. Matt Simmons canceled his plans for big wave energy to save the state of Maine. It just doesn't pay at those low prices. Price spiked again later to $126 and has been hovering down around the $110 mark. Since then, that price spike was in April.